So guys, good afternoon. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this is the Clay Way. Today we're going to show you how to basically remove the engine on your Mazda CX-7. Most of which, just to save some of the length of the video, we are not going to show you every single nut and bolt. But I am going to take the time to describe some things to you and some problems that I ran into um, and different things that happened while we're doing this. So if the video is helpful, please subscribe, share my videos, send me your wonderful comments. If you want to reach out to me, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook. I'll be happy to answer your automotive-related needs if I can. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. So let's go. Self-explanatory, but you need to remove your wheels first, jack up your vehicle, make sure it's safe. Uh, I do think that you'll be able to get it up high enough on the ground in your driveway if you're using like a, a roller dolly which i'll show you here in a little while about what i mean with that you could set the cradle down on that and then roll it out from underneath the car but just please be safe be careful um use your brain you know take everything apart watch the video first watch the whole thing and then you'll understand what's going on because i kind of uh made some mistakes while we we're doing it no big deal we got them rectified and it'll make it simpler for you to get it out okay so ours is an all-wheel drive so we're removing the drive shaft we're going to remove the exhaust i'm not going to show you show you nut and bolt removal of this but i'm going to show you how the procedures are that i'm actually going to utilize i've removed the wheels both sides removed the brake caliper 17 millimeter bolts here 19 millimeter bolts here and the reason we're not taking the strut out is because the strut is buried up inside there and it's actually simple to remove this. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the ABS wire and we're gonna remove it at the electrical connection. And the reason that we're not gonna remove it from the back of here is just because a lot of times these tips like to break off and these don't like to come out. In this situation, it may be okay. We probably actually do it now that I'm looking at it. Normally I don't, I disconnect them, but because we can get to the back of this and pry it up a little bit and take that eight or 10 millimeter bolt out of there, should be able to get this out without breaking it and then it can stay connected to the strut and we won't have to mess with none of that. So on second thought, I'm gonna do it that and way. And that's why I normally do not take the sensors out. I broke that sensor off. So we've got, the exhaust done up there by the clamp. Uh, we've got the rear drive shaft out. What size bolts were them? Do you remember, Jeff? Uh, I believe they were 14 millimeter. Use a wobbler. Okay. So we got that undone. Uh, and we're hoping that we can just lower the whole cradle down and leave the drive shaft where it is because I don't think it's going to make a difference. Make sure they unplug the O2 side, downstream O2. Yeah. Um, so. Most of that's done. We're going to have to remove the starter to get to our flywheel bolts. And we're going to remove a couple bolts down here on the bottom of the bell housing where it connects to the transmission. There. We're going to remove this bolt. I'm not sure what it does. but Okay, so while we're removing them, we realize that there's two more that go into the, the oil pan from back here. We want to remove as much stuff from the bottom as we can. And take special note that I'm putting my bolts back in just so I don't lose them and have them laying around everywhere. I did not have to take off the clip that held this on. I could have left that hanging on the strut. And we don't think we have to actually remove the starter. We'll remove the starter when it's out. And the starter bolts onto the side of the engine block and slides out. You can kind of see how it sits inside that channel right there. Um, so we don't have to remove that till we actually get the engine out. So now we're gonna go up above in the hood and do our you know, few things that we have to disconnect. On ours, we actually got the intercooler off if you got a turbo model. So we got the intercooler off, some of the plastics up there, the air filter box to allow us to be able to unhook the shifting linkage. And we're gonna also unhook the steering column knuckle. It goes on there and we'll show you that. Okay, here in make a sure that you don't have anything connected to your subframe like your AC lines or transmission lines because we're not planning, we're gonna um, undo the AC compressor off the block. We're not gonna unhook it. We'll leave the AC compressor in it. We might take it out and evacuate it, but for you guys at home, you're probably gonna wanna leave it inside there so you don't have to mess with your air wire, So we're gonna disconnect this and we're also gonna disconnect it from the passenger side. You can see how it comes up in, or yeah, passenger side. We're gonna undo that. We're gonna take this motor mount out so then the motor's free. We're gonna undo this transmission mount, take that out. 
we've got the linkage unhooked back there and got it popped off the arm right here it should just was there a clip on that jeff feels yeah. like there's a c-clip on there yeah, it's um it's pulled the battery pulled the battery tray pulled coolant out coolant lines it's a little clip you just pull it you pull that back and it releases it right off there sweet the clip stays on good stuff right there guys frame we've got some electrical connectors undone and i'm going to show you on this other motor because this is all complete and removed with everything still intact so take a look at the electrical connectors that we undid a couple grounds pretty much you can start lowering the motor down don't lower it too much and you could unhook you know whatever electrical connectors you can find but anything that runs from the engine to the body you're pretty much your wiring harness should stay with the motor and then if you've got it from a decent junkyard that didn't cut everything you could essentially plug and play so what in What's down inside there is these little cone shaped things. They go inside these holes right here. And we're having a problem with the steering knuckle. Uh, we're gonna raise it up. We can't get the steering knuckle undone so we might have to leave the rack up inside the car and undo the tie rod ends. But I'll show you how to take them off without breaking them if we do it that way. Okay, one of the very first things you need to do with this before you can take the engine out is you need to disconnect the steering linkage. And in this vehicle, Unlike most, you have to disconnect it from the inside of the vehicle. So we're gonna to have to remove the kick panel and there should be one bolt we can pull out to remove the steering shaft from the steering column. So you're gonna get inside the car and you're gonna remove this cover plate and then you're gonna remove the 12 millimeter bolt that holds that on there. And you should be able to take the uh, that right off of there like that now we've got it marked so we make sure that it goes on the right way but that came off really nice much easier than the other way that i was going to do it that you need to do during this process is you're going to want to remove the fans um because with the motor mounts out of there it, it allows the fans to you know the engine to contact the fans i think we're going to be okay but i just don't want you to damage your stuff so before you do it, remove the whole fan assembly and the radiator, cooler, reservoir, etc. Okay, so we got her out. Uh, one of the things that we wished we would have done was remove uh, this little section of pipe and remove the fans. But how we got the engine around the fans was we used the jack and obviously we got it sitting on jack stands. I do believe you probably could do this in your driveway. You're going to have to get the vehicle off up awfully high and you may want to go to Harbor Freight and use these so you could roll it out from underneath the vehicle to pick it up off. Um, we don't have to move ours and we got, you know, cherry pickers, etc., to be able to pull it out of there. So I'm going to give you a little quick shot of all of what we left on the vehicle and how we got it out so then you can you know, make your own decisions on what you do. Because there's obviously more than the way that we did it. But, all in all, it only took us a couple hours to, to get it out. And that's because we were just trying to figure out the phonetics of getting it out. our AC lines. Okay, so once you got your starter removed, you're gonna have to remove this rubber grommet that allows you access to the flywheel bolts. So we had a little problem and we had to take our turbo off there was too much play in it so we had to order another one from the ebay but this particular bolt right here is longer than all the other bell housing bolts yeah, i just dropped it um and then you have to take that one out that i got loose below there we're already out and then other than the obvious ones that are up there 
There was one hiding out right there. So we found that. Looks like we might have all the bell housing bolts out of it now. Now we're gonna take this bracket off that's held onto the engine and it holds the transmission on there. And we should be just about ready to lift this thing up off the cradle and install the other one on the cradle. Okay, a little special note. This bolt right here, which is kind of goofy and weird, if you're ever setting timing on one of these, this bolt comes out and you put the bolt inside your timing kit and you have to have a special timing kit to be able to time these. Um, and then you'll slide a longer bolt inside there and that'll lock the crank into position because you can set the timing. The harmonic balancer on these do not have a keyway in them, so you have to time them internally on the engine. It sounds complicated, but if you're doing it and you have the timing kit, it'll be super easy, no problems. You didn't. Um, there's a weird old bell housing bolt right there. We're gonna take that off now. We've disconnected all the electrical from the transmission and just drape that over our engine because luckily our other engine has all the electrical, but even if it didn't, it's easier to unhook the few parts from the transmission like the ground wire. There was a ground strap that went in here somewhere right about there, you know. Okay, so a special note for you guys. Um, we got the transmission held up with the jack. Obviously, you guys have already seen the jack stands that are holding the cradle. Um, you don't have to worry about this cradle moving too much. Once you get it on the, the ground and you start bolting up your struts, you know, you can kind of center it, pick it up a little bit and center the cradle. Uh, so try not to move it obviously, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. Now I'm probably gonna put this up under transmission removal or engine removal. Um, I also wanted to point out to you guys that love to send me the messages of Oh, isn't it easier to remove the engine from the top? No, it's not. <laughs> Most engines and subframe vehicles, um, it's easier to remove the engine through the bottom. I love guys when they send me these messages, you said that, but I got mine out through the top. Well, good for you. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it is literally easier to work on this all exposed like this than to remove all these wires and stuff with it underneath the hood and even if you, most of the time you can't get them out and in this particular situation you'd have a really difficult time because the the uh the the torque converter is actually studded with nuts instead of bolted in so that would be that much further that you would have to move the engine over to get it out but hey to each their own so now we're going to separate the engine and i'm going to put it in the uh, high speed once we start getting it going here Okay, the jack that we had underneath the transmission was uh, Impeding our progress of removal of the engine from the cradle so we ended up switching out the jacks with another jack and When we did that when we lowered the one jack down it split all apart on us thankfully Now we've got the cherry picker and then we're ready to do the magic I kind of think this is worthless video. Uh, but I had somebody crying the other day that I didn't show them how to do everything. And in this video, I didn't show you how to do a lot of things. But it's pretty self explanatory. And I think if you're going to attempt to do this, you probably got the capability to figure the things out that I didn't show you. And they were very rudimentary and basic stuff. So now Jeff is just going to jack this thing up. And we'll separate it away, and then we got, then we, then we down there, we got a little jack holding up our transmission. We're blessed with all these wonderful tools to use, and yeah, it looks like it's pretty much there. You want to grab this idea? And Jeff is doing this by himself, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just talking and narrating. Terribly, I'm working off of it. Okay. He said, work it off. Let's see, works this magic. Okay. I think if he went up with a lift, it'll just come off. Get <laughs> that 
Well, <laughs> that's all she's done, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the video. So, if this video was helpful, please subscribe, click the notifications, share the video, and remember, if I didn't think you could do it, or if some other man can do it, you can do it too. That I guarantee you, even you women out there. So I, I know a lot little, of smart women. Ladies out there that can do this real quick and easy. God bless you guys. Have a great day.